Frank Gasparini. I'm here today being interviewed as the, as the President and CEO of the National Council of Agriculture Employees, NCAE, a National Agricultural Trade Association in Washington, D.C., and as the President and CEO of ASHCA, the Agricultural Safety and Health Council of America, a 501c3 educational organization based in my hometown of Leesburg, Virginia, focused on agricultural safety and health from the farmer all the way to the manufacturer level. Thank you. The uh, new WPS is, of course, confusing. We wrote substantial uh, public comment on that for NCAE and for ASHCA. Uh, we are not directly engaged in the educational efforts at this point because they are still relatively confused with many of the states not completely prepared to do the training that they are supposed to be doing in January of this year. We have worked with NASDA, the National Association of State Departments of Agriculture, and we have continued to talk with EPA about how we can comply with short training availability. And we had had a session at the NCAE annual meeting with EPA and with a NASDA speaker discussing how best to comply and how to do our best effort to comply. We are still hoping that the new administration will give us a stay until next year for this because we want to comply, but the materials are just not really available and we are fast approaching the use season where it's going to be too late for farmers to get the training and the certifications needed if full implementation goes in for 2017. Sorry for that answer, but it's a difficult topic because the regulation was posed fairly last minute and the training materials were not ready and it's a good example of federal overreach in my opinion and lack of preparedness and then forcing that effort down onto the states and onto the end users, the regulated community. The new worker protection standard overall is going to cause some extra work and a great deal of, of added record keeping for most U.S. growers outside of California. My California members have said that most of it is what they've lived with for some years. The most challenging piece and the most objected to piece at this point is the worker representative piece because we don't know exactly what that means and it's our constant fear that that opens opportunities for legal services and other advocacy groups to come fishing in farmers records to perhaps collect a list of people who have worked for you in the past who might not have worked for years and use that as a shopping list for uh, litigation. That's probably the part that's, that's concerned us the most. The other pieces about having to stop uh, if somebody approaches the, uh, the application area, we usually do that but it's not clear on unauthorized entry to, to the farm and about landowner rights. There are some disclarities there. But the piece we're most concerned with is this whole issue of, of worker representative, what that means and what that person has a right to vis-a-vis -vis the privacy rights of workers, the legal privacy rights of workers, and the legal privacy rights of the growers themselves. Well, hopefully they've all been engaged with NASDA and with their state extension uh, workforces already, and I'm sure they have. Uh, the dealers and distributors, of course, as with all applicator issues, are generally, they and local and state extension are the key trainers and the key holders of the knowledge of pesticide application uh, expertise and, and uh, uh, yeah compliance, sorry, <laughs> of pesticide expertise and compliance. And we look to them to have that expertise for our growers going forward. We know that they've been engaged with NASDA already and that they also are working towards the idea of let's get this right and let's do full implementation in 2018. Uh, if we have full implementation and enforcement this year, we will all work together to do the best we can to get our growers through the first year of, of this new program.